going on guys, STF Gaming here. Today we got another retro deck profile on the 2010 uh, SJC Edison 75th Shonen Jump. Um, pretty much one format, one event format, um, because it was the start of a new format and soon after this uh, event in the 70, 75th uh, Shonen Jump in Edison, New Jersey, uh, Infernities came out, X Sabres came out, just like really annoying decks that uh, kind of made the format super aggressive. So this was a um, really fun format. Again, one event. Uh, you saw my, if you haven't seen my uh, plant deck of the format, uh, it is, I believe it's going to be the previous video. So uh, go and check that out after you watch this video. So pretty much the point of this deck is to um, spam uh, level 8 synchro monsters you can get them with the flamville fire dog uh, let's get a quick read of this because it's pretty much the key card of the deck when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard you can special summon one fire monster with 200 or less defense from your deck so you're going to be getting these flamville magicians that's the only target but uh, this says except fire dog so you can't get another fire dog this is your only target um remember there are no um xyz monsters so you can't make ranks uh, this was in 2010 um, I believe the the set to come out after this event was Absolute Power Force. Don't quote me on that, but maybe. Um, so you get this. It's not a good card, really, but it is a 200 defense uh, tuner monster, so you can just spam uh, rank, I mean, level 8 uh, synchros. Um, and then there's one more sweet card. This is pretty much the soul of the deck right here. It is Rekindling. Special summon from your graveyard as many fire monsters as possible with 200 defense. During the end phase, remove them from play. So Rekindling's at 3. You can, you know, send these guys to the graveyard with Raikou. And then you can obviously attack with Fire Dog. Get the Flanvel Magicians. You can make a whole bunch of Stardust Dragons or uh, Thought Ruler Archfiends or whatever uh, level 8s are good at the time. Don't really have a Synchro deck for this build. Sorry about that, guys. But, um, yeah, it's just like a really good uh, control deck. It's kind of like a... I mean, it's not... Teledad, obviously, but I guess it's kind of comparable where you can make a lot of um, a lot of level eight synchros and set some back rows. Um, yeah, it's like a slower version with Kai's and Raikos and stuff. So yeah, let's just get into the uh, video. Let's get into the explanations. If you guys uh, want to stop here, you you already saw the deck, but if you want to hear my explanations, um, we'll get onto that now. <laughs> On two explanations, I, I want to get this right off the bat. Um, this was the most important card of the format, and I would say this format revolved around this card only. Raikou is that good, this format. Um, you could get Raikou off of your Super Nibble Mega Hamster. So a lot of people were running this lineup in every deck for some reason. It was it was just weird for the time. Like I don't know. It was just a really interesting um, position Yu-Gi-Oh was in. Uh, this was... The, a brand new start to a format um, and no one really knew what to run at this YCS so quick draw wasn't super popular and not a lot of people knew about it but a lot of quite a few top this event um, so yeah what I like to do against Raikou was just I always assume my opponent set was a Raikou so if I had like a Sangin in my hand or a, a Dandelion or even a Lone Fire I would just like I would just summon them and attack the face down knowing it's Raikou and it always seemed to work so um, it's really good and it's also really easy to play around. Also, if you go first and you get the Raikou, you're always one step ahead of your opponent. If they have the Raikou too, obviously they can't set it because they, your opponent's just going to flip it and kill their Raikou. So it's, it was just, a, it was one of the most powerful cards of the format and it mills cards. Let's get this, uh, I guess, the Super Nimbles, all I can get is Raikou. So it's like the Gravekeeper Spy of Raikou, pretty much. Pretty good. All right, next up, you got the Sangin. Sangin searches every team in this deck. It's especially good in this deck because you can search one of the best cards in the deck. Quick draw. Knight Assailant, discardable by quick draw, and you can get back your right coat or your morphing jar. Or, um, actually, that's it. But um, usually you want to save this in your hand um, for the discard effect. But again, if you don't have the right coat, you're going first. Maybe you want to set this to make sure you have the out to their right coat. Because you always want to be ahead on the right coat flips in this format. It's very important. Uh, morphing jar. 
personally, I didn't like this card this format, but I don't blame Jeff for running it. Obviously, you can get it back with Night Assailant, and you can refresh your hand. It is quite a clunky deck, but it's consistent at the same time. Hard to explain. You just gotta play the deck to see. It's really fun. Next up, you get the plant package. Very small plant package. Um, but it, it just helps with synchroing mostly. Uh, you just run Titanial. Uh, not that it's good or anything, but it, obviously it's good against Raikou if you have the Dandelion tokens. Um, mostly worrying about the Dandelion. That's why we run Lone Fire. I mean, you could probably even get away with just the Dandelions, but the deck ran this small plant package because it just it works really well with the deck once we get to the quick draws you'll really understand the power of the dandelions um but yeah i mean you could go lone fire into dandelion and you could call the haunted your lone fire tribute the dandelion get your titanial and all of a sudden your titanial can negate a whole bunch of targets like mst Raikou, stuff like that and it's really powerful even if you draw this you could tribute summon it pretty easily in the deck like this with the with the mega hamsters and the dandelion tokens Another thing I used to do, um, Dandelion says when it's, when it's sent to the graveyard, you get two uh, tokens, and they can't be tributed for a tribute summon during the turn that you're special summoned, so I used to tribute set um, the tokens, so yeah. Not sure what else to say about the plant package. Pretty good plant package. Um, trooper, makes sense in the deck, you can mill your dandelions and your cards for Pot of Avarice, since Pot of Avarice is at 3. And you can get it off Debris Dragon. Uh, debris, make your Black Roses and your Stardust. Stardust is really easy to make in this deck because you got two dandelions in this format. So you can always have a token and then get your level 3 and make the Stardust. Stardust is a shining card this format. Although Caius is legal, so you have to play around that. Next up is Quick Draw. We'll actually get to that last. Uh, Caius, really good this format. If you can get this out on a face down Raikou. You can get rid of their uh, tempo, and you can, you know, really get some pushes in. A good play would be, like I said, you get the first set Raiko, you can flip this, kill their back row, tribute for Caius, kill their right set monster, you get really far ahead. I really liked Caius, this format, it was really good in this deck. Lad, uh, this negates everything, and man, it's powerful. Obviously, outs are like, um, maybe a Treeborn Frog or a... Uh, Book of Moon, stuff like that, just like cards that can uh, get in its way, but this this card, if you play it at the right time, it can just lock your opponent out of the game, so really good card this deck, and then you get the quick draws, obviously, like I said, it's really good with Dandelion, what we're going to be wanting to do is this combo, if these two are in your hand, you can discard the Dandelion, summon the quick draw, you get your two tokens, you make... Most of the time you're going to be wanting to make this, but it's not all the time. You got a you got a toolbox of junk cards that you can make. Um, but yeah, you make you make the drill warrior, and then you can cycle your drill warrior, discard a monster. Actually, is it a card or a monster? It's a card. You discard a card, and then next turn he comes back, and you can get any monster from your graveyard to your hand. So you can cycle your dandelion tokens for a defense nonstop. You can get more quick draws and do. You can just do a lot. It's a, it's a really toolboxy deck. It's like pretty sweet. It's not like the, the um, shooting quasar deck where you where you make a million combos. It's not super combo-y. It's just like a really good control deck. Uh, next up, foolish. You got dandelions. Makes sense. Good combo. You can like foolish your dandelion, summon debris. That's an auto uh, level eight dragon if you want. You get the heavy, pretty good this format. Uh, a lot of people ran traps, a lot of traps. MST, two book. Book was an interesting card. Um, like looking back, I'm not sure why people ran so many books. Like I don't think it's the greatest, but it is a defensive spell. So there's that. Brain control, quite a few tributes in the deck, so it makes sense. And then three pot of ever. So you're gonna keep milling your cards with the right goes and. You can spam cards you grave with the quick draw and stuff, and they're just really easy to activate. This is one of the best decks of all time for a card like Pot of Avarice. And then Jeff's heavy uh, trap lineup. He opted to run a Starlight Road, really good against Black Rose and Heavy, um, and Torrential. So, makes sense. You're, the deck runs three Stardust anyway, just throw this in there. Um, he has a 41 card deck. So yeah, two Dust Tornado. 
another card looking back um, I'm not too understanding I don't remember too much why it was so good but I, again setting Ryko first is insane obviously if your opponent sets a card you don't want to set if your opponent set a monster you don't really want to set bottomless because they're just gonna Ryko it so maybe you're gonna want to set the dust tornado because it's you know if they Ryko it at least you can chain it it's one of the only cards if you look at this trap lineup that uh, you can chain to Ryko so Again, in my opinion, it was Ryko format. You know, you've heard of GOAT format and stuff. This was Ryko format. Um, two bottomless, really good against Titanial. And Blackwing was really big. Another reason why Dust Tornado and Book of Moon are good is because of Blackwing. Um, also, there was a Flambell deck that was good. Uh, Billy Bray talked with a Quick Draw Cat. I mean, uh, not a Quick Draw Cat, a uh, Synchro Cat deck. Uh, two Deep Prisons and some other traps one solemn judgment because it's legal all right guys so that's jeff's build let's take a quick look at my build uh it's it's a bit different than jeff so give me a minute there all right now we're at my build um before we get too much into the differences between our decks i just want to say this is a 42 guard deck it's a 42 card deck and i just i don't advocate a 42 card deck in like any format it's just I was playing this deck for like two weeks uh, before the event came out, practicing it, and I could not cut cards. Like, I, it started at like 50 cards. I found some cards I just didn't like, like, I don't know. I can't remember now, but um, yeah, I just like, I looked and looked at the deck, and you know, it was getting like 3 a.m., and I was still testing with my friends, deciding what to cut, and I couldn't cut anything. So, we just kept it how it was, and that's why it was 42. Um, as you can see, very similar to just deck um i run pretty much the same trap lineup just i don't run the starlight road um for the spells it looks pretty similar did he run anything different than me i don't even know i think our spell lineup is the exact same except i run econ so i guess you could say i run econ over his starlight road onto the monsters that's where it really changes up and that's where i really like my build over his i got the treeborn frog the third caius uh gore's not the greatest but it's it's gore's is good um, especially when you're not running the road like Jeff Gores makes more sense um, it's just another defensive card uh, like I said it's a Ryko format you don't always want to set your uh, cards that can be killed by Ryko so Gores is always the good out you know they flip Ryko kill your card and then they attack you summon the Gores makes sense um, I think the biggest and most important card between my build and his is the Treeborn Frog uh, this is coming from Sirius Treeborn Frog himself uh, <laughs> You know, when you have inconsistent hands, whether it be you can't draw that dandelion for the quick draw, or you just got a handful of uh, monarchs, you know, you could always foolish for the treeborn frog instead of the dandelion. You could always discard the treeborn frog for the quick draw. Treeborn frog is always an out to your opponent's lad. It just adds a lot of versatility to the deck, but just with one card addition alone. It lets me run the third Caius, which is really good. It lets me always be able to summon a level 8 uh, dragon off of Debris Dragon. So if we have like a level 3 um, um, a level three monster off of Debris, the Treeborn will always allow me to make a level 8. Um, again, it's super similar to Jeff. We're talking like a, a couple card difference. You know, he runs the, star the Starlight, I run the Econ. I always liked Econ uh, pre like 20... 2010 because it just adds aggression to your deck and it makes sense in any treeborn frog deck anyway um yeah but like kais is kais and Ryko are the two best cards this format um and i got to run three because of the treeborn frog so it makes a lot of sense so that's the deck profile of both of our decks guys uh let me know which, which deck you prefer uh, they're both great uh let me see let me know what decks you guys want to see next and uh, don't forget to subscribe and like if you want to see more videos like this in the future.